You know, I, I, I started talking on this week, and this is session three, having to do with prayer. Um, again, I think we get a lot of information going, but there's not that much in regard to actual teaching about, about the Word of God. I think we've got the, the internet is absolutely full of information, but I, the, the thing that sustains us, it isn't, it isn't just ways to better ourselves, which I think we certainly need that, but, but we need to know what the Bible says. And so that's really what I'm wanting to bring to you each day is a real understanding of what the Word of God has to say. Now, here I'm talking about prayer. Uh, I started the other day, and the first day, I just give you the scripture that I read to you. It says, and he said unto them, because his disciples came to him, and they said, teach us to pray the way John taught his disciples to pray. I think that's very important. There's, there are things like that that you pass on to people that you assume they know, but quite frankly, it's honestly uh, surprising how many don't know. I remember... I remember one time I was up talking and I, I was going to go across several things that was really well, very basic. And I, I just said, you know, there's no need me going over this. Everybody here knows this. And there was one elderly lady that raised her hand back toward the back of the congregation. She said, I don't know that. It really made me realize how important it was for us to sit down and go over even the basics on prayer. A lot of people, they don't know how to pray. Uh, their, their prayer life consists of getting their grocery list out and telling God how bad everything is. But John the Baptist disciples, or rather disciples said, teach us to pray the way John taught his disciples. And so here's what he said. He said, when you pray, say this, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. We covered that. Then we talked about in session two, we talked about thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in heaven, so on earth. And so then we talked about that. We talked about the kingdom in relation to your prayer, how to approach the kingdom of God and how to work through that. The third lap is this, where he said, give us day by day our daily bread. Now, I want to spend just a couple of moments on that here today. Uh, I, I think this is a mindset that we really need to examine our hearts about. I looked up a couple of different translations. The New Living Translation says, give us each day the food that we need. The Amplified said, give us daily our bread or and food for the morrow. Uh, so, so I, that's what I want to talk about is your daily bread. I want to talk about what that means for you. You know, the fact is, is he talked about that getting your needs met basically, um, before he talked about almost anything else. He talked about praise. He talked about the kingdom. And then he talked about telling God what it is that you need. Now the bread isn't necessarily bread that you eat. Uh, you remember when Jesus was talking, the woman said, come and heal my daughter. And Jesus said, it's not right for me to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. So in that context, bread, where he was talking about, was talking about healing. So when he talks about, give me daily what I need, he's talking about whatever you need. And you might be thinking about whether it be healing, whether it be, whether it be uh, financial needs being met, physical needs being met whether it's just something to eat today, whether it's, regardless of what it is, whatever your need for the day is, I think that's very important because God wants to know, wants you to know that, that he's in this for the long haul, but he's also in it every day with you. He is there in the present with you. It isn't just what, what you can do for him. He's there for you in the present situation that you're in right now. Almost as though everything out there doesn't matter to him. Now we know that it does, but I think, I think really the context here tells us that God's not just concerned about what's going to be in a thousand years and what heaven's gonna be like. God's concerned, God's concerned when you're hurt. God's concerned when you're disappointed. God is concerned when you've been abused or when you've had loss. He's concerned when someone takes advantage of you or just when you bow your knee at night and you pray, Lord, help me to sleep in peace. 
He's right there in the moment. And I think that that's something that we need to really back up for just a few moments because we have such a tendency to be looking out there someplace, not realizing that God wants to be in the present moment. He wants to be in the present. You know, I heard something cute, but I think it really is true. That's why they call it the present is because it's a gift. Isn't that great? The present is a gift. It's something from God. That's where God wants to meet you. And you know what? A lot of people don't know how to live in the present. Did you know that? A lot of people only, and you've heard them say it, man, this weekend, I'm going to have a great time. Uh, I'll tell you what, next month when we do this, and it's like, it's like everything in their life is put off to another time, but they don't know how to be alive in the present. You understand what I'm saying? You know, to where I am so alive with you that I realize that reality doesn't exist yesterday. That was, that was just a memory. It doesn't exist tomorrow. That is just where our hopes are and our dreams are. See, the reality of your life, it hasn't even happened tomorrow. And yesterday's already passed. You can't change that. The only place that reality exists and the only place that you're going to find God is right now in the present. And he's right there with you. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta learn that right now is where the blessing is. Right now is where his presence is. And a lot of people, don't, they don't know how to live there. You know, it's like right now with you, that I can sit with you for just a moment and actually be alive right now and absorb the fact that this is, this is reality. That this is the only place that reality exists right now this moment that I'm talking to you. Do you have the ability to be alive? So there's a lot of people, they'll go through their day and it's almost like they checked out. They, they're, they literally are not alive even though they're going through the day. They're, they're not absorbing the moment even though they're breathing and talking and eating. They're not really alive during the moment. Have you ever been with somebody and you talk to them and you could just tell, you are not here. You know, I see, as you're looking at me, uh, the lights are on, but no one is at home. I mean, it's, they're, they're not with you. They're not present in that moment. And I think that's something that would be worth your, your, your time to learn to absorb the moment. I'm not thinking about tomorrow. I may plan for tomorrow, but that's not where I live. I live right now. This is the only place that I can make change. This is the only place that I can really... Uh, uh, minister to your needs or minister to my needs. As long as we have it one of these days, well, right around the corner, I'll tell you what, just over the hill, this is going, no, your reality only exists right now. And that's where God wants to meet you. And God wants you to understand that he wants to meet your daily bread, what you need right now. This is where God is for you. He's not someplace else. He's not far off. You know, people that don't even know God, they're talking about, and they'll talk about the man upstairs. They they don't know anything about him. He's not the man upstairs. He's the man right there in your life, right now, right now. And when you pray, when you pray, you are right there connected to him, and he is ever present in the moment you live right there. So that's where he wants to be. You've got to live by faith in that area one day at a time, and that's the truth. So daily bread isn't just talking about food or or money. It's broader than that. It's whatever you need. And he talked about that before he said anything else. He said, I want you to come with praise and thanksgiving. I want you to understand the kingdom. But then he said, bring your needs to me. Bring your needs. You know, I bring bring the things that you're feeling, whatever that is. I don't know whether you ever sit down and and wrote out your needs. You know, I've I've had some people say, I want to write out my prayer. Not that I'm trying to be mechanical, but I want that moment with the Lord to be something special. Well, I think it's, I think it would be appropriate to sit down and write your needs out to where you actually present them on a legal term and you lay them before the Lord. And you say, this is my need. And I'm asking you to touch this. This is my daily bread. 
See, and, and you know, fact is, this isn't just a good idea from someone. This is what Jesus said to do. Jesus said, this is, ask for your daily bread. So it's important that you understand the value of this. Now, he's going to talk about forgiveness here in a few moments. He's going to talk about being delivered from the evil one. We'll cover all of that tomorrow. But right now, he's talking about what your needs are. I just want to say this to you. God is concerned what your needs are. You need to learn to bring those to him. I'm not talking about griping about the moment and coming in unbelief. I'm not talking about telling God how bad things are, but I'm talking about coming before the Lord and saying, this is my need in my life. And that's perfectly all right. There's nothing wrong. I know some people say, well, that would be selfish to ask anything. He told you to ask what you need. He said, ask and, and it'll be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open." So you have to understand that's the nature of it. He said, call unto me, Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. And, and to back that up, my favorite scripture to go along with that is Jeremiah 32, 27, where he said, behold, I am the Lord God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? So he said, call upon me, call upon me in the time of trouble. Call upon me whenever you're in, you're in serious trouble, when you're being picked on, when you've been taken advantage of. The Lord said, call upon me and I'll answer you. I'll show myself strong to you. I mean, that's so important for you to understand that this fits in prayer. Now, I want to say this isn't all that prayer is. This is just a small portion. He said right in the middle of it, he didn't say you begin telling God how bad things are and how much you have need of this. He, he knows what you have need of, the Bible said, before you ask. But, but when you ask for something, you give legitimate access into your life. Do you remember the scripture that said, behold, I stand at the door and knock? He said, if any man will answer, I'll come in and I'll sup with him. He'll sup with me. Well, what door is he talking about? Well, that's the door of your will. And, and quite frankly, it only has a handle on the inside, not on the outside. He stands, even God will not violate that wall. Now you can go to the other scripture where it talks about that same door it was when God speak, was speaking to Cain. And he said to Cain, he said, sin lies at the door and its desires to have dominion over you. I so say, you got to understand, you're going to have to be the one that opens or closes that door. And when you come to the Lord, it isn't just the fact that somebody says, well, he knows what I need. I don't need to ask. But he told you to ask. He told you to. And so what you're doing is, is you're coming and you're opening the door of your heart and you're inviting him to come in and take part in the area where you're facing this need. God wants to be that for you. God wants to give you the children's bread. But he said, ask. I think it's so important. And I know it's, it's, it's so simple that it almost seems ridiculous to go over. But in, in, in the study concerning the Lord's Prayer here, this was very important to him. I mean, it's just almost right off the bat. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. It's important to him. I mean, that's just at the top of the food chain. Your needs are more important to him than you realize. It's, it's, it's the truth. I think a lot of times uh, we think God uh, only has us here so he can use us for something. I remember many years ago, uh, I was uh, preaching a message and and I said, a lot of people, they've married God for his money. And in other words, what I'm just saying is they're in a relationship with him just so they can get stuff from him. I mean, the idea of being in a relationship with God is to get stuff. That They think that the only reason God gave them scriptures so, with the, so they could get more stuff. That's just how their mind is. And I just made the statement, and it was it's so many years ago, but, but uh, I still remember it to this day for this reason. Um, and I said, they married God for his money. Well, that being said, a, a few years down the line, 
there was a, a man who came in and he was preaching. And, oh my God, he was a missionary. He was a missionary from Mexico. And uh, boy, he was just talking about the fact, if your heart wasn't bleeding for Mexico, you weren't even saved. And man, I'll tell you, he was good. And he just, you know, the, the longer he talked, the lower I sat. And I thought, oh my, my God, oh, because I, I, my heart wasn't bleeding for Mexico. Now I support Mexico. I, I want to send missionaries, but... It just wasn't there. And I was getting lower and lower, and I'm thinking, I'm not even sure I'm saved. And the Lord spoke to me, and he said, and I didn't marry you for your money. <laughs> How liberating that was, that God was saying, I'm not in a relationship just so I can get you to do stuff for me. I'm not in a relationship with you just so you can run errands for me and do what I want. See, God's love for you <laughs> goes far beyond your ability to give him anything. As a matter of fact, he loved you when you were dead in your trespasses and sin. You didn't have anything to bring to the table. <laughs> and other than your faith, you still don't. I'm just telling you. Uh, he, he loved us and he gave himself for us, but it was such a liberating word. And he said, I didn't marry you for your money. And I'll tell you what, that touched my heart so much and I realized that in my time in prayer, it wasn't good that God was trying to, because he's not nervous about things falling apart. People get so nervous about the political changes and things that happen. Can I just tell you something? Jesus is Lord. <laughs> that hasn't changed. It ain't ever going to change. The scoffers will scoff fully on them. Jesus is still Lord. You better know it. And... <laughs> I, I realized that he just wants to be with me. Isn't, isn't, that, isn't that the coolest thing in the world? God doesn't want anything from me. He just wants, he just wants me. <laughs> he just wants to be with me. How, how wonderful is that? And it's such a great delight for him to sit down with you and you open your heart to him and say, Father, I need this. I need this. And the Bible said, oh, it's his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. But it's not, it's not just out of being, he, it's, it's out of love. The, the overflow of his love compels him in your direction. He can't stay away from you. <laughs> That is the truth. I'm just telling you something. So he's present. Oh my goodness, he is ever present with you. And he's just saying, yeah, let's go, let's go through the the let's go through the pages of, you know, understanding the kingdom and understanding all of these other things. But then he said, I want you to sit down and tell me what what's in your heart? What what do you need today? What what can I do for you? And that's important. God wants to commune with you, kind of like he did with, uh, with Abraham over Sodom. You know, it was the most amazing thing. <laughs> Those two angels were headed to Sodom and God was sitting there with Moses. I mean, with Abraham, rather. And uh, <laughs> God says, I, do I dare keep this from my friend? See, that's how he feels about you. God wants to share his purpose and his intention about everything. If you can just get quiet enough with him. We're so busy, television's talking to us, radio's talking to us. We've got music playing on our ears literally 24 hours a day. And there's no time for us to just to sit and hear, just be instructed by his fellowship and his communion with us. How important that that is. And, and if we can just get quiet, and, and he said, I'm not, he said, dare I do anything that, that I don't talk to my friend, Abraham. And so he said, he told Abraham, he said, this is what we're gonna do, we're gonna destroy Sodom. He said, this is the, their wickedness come up before me. And Abraham said, Abraham said, Lord, you, you can't destroy them. He said, if I can find 50 righteous, would you destroy the whole city? Would you destroy the 50 righteous with the city? And God's reaction was never, ever, well, let me get back to you. I'm not too sure. You know, I'm really pretty upset. He never did that. 
whenever Abraham said that, he said, yes. And Abraham, that was so easy. Abraham said, yeah, but, yeah, but suppose I can't find 50. What if I could only find 40? God's reaction was immediate and tender. Okay, if I can find 40. <laughs> oh, Lord, please don't be upset. What if I can only find 30? I mean, he did that all the way down to 10. He figured there had to have been 10 because he's counting Lot, and surely there's 10 people in Lot's group that, that are righteous. And, he, and, and, of course, I believe that had he said, Lord, suppose we can't find anyone. Suppose there's no one there. Would you spare him? I believe God would have said, yes, I'll spare him. <laughs> See, God just wants to talk to you. That's, that's, that's what the moment in asking bread for daily bread, that's, that's what it is to God. Things that are important to you. Like I said, the bread isn't just something you put in your mouth, nor is it just healing, which it's all of those things, but it's more. It's those things that are important to you. And he wants to commune. He said, come, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Of course, reason outside the word of God produces unbelief. But in your prayer time, he just wants to commune with you. He wants to talk to you. He wants to talk to you as his closest friend. He just wants to tell you what he thinks. And he wants to know what you think. He does. Abraham just absolutely turned God in a complete different direction, just like that, because he was his friend. That's how God feels about you. And he said, you know, in the midst of your prayer, tell me what your daily bread is. So what, what is it that you need? What is it that's important? You might say, well, God knows. I, I, of course he knows. he knows. He knows where you are. He knows what you have need of. But he wants communion with you. He wants to fellowship. He, he wants you to say to him, Lord, I'm facing a problem that I don't know how to fix. And I need help. I need wisdom. I need strength. Would you help me? See, that's, that's the beauty of the relationship and the communion that you have with our wonderful, wise, and precious, and glorious Heavenly Father. He is so good, and he's so smart. <laughs> I'm telling you, God can fix anything. So in your prayer time, take a few moments and just share your heart with him and say, help me, help me in this area. Or Lord, I need this. Would you, would you minister to me and my family in this? Approach him with that. Approach him and you'll find that the relationship and it's not just the legalism. I mean, we, the, the, the covenant by nature has a certain legalism about it, but God's not coming mechanically to you. God comes to you with, with uh, loving kindnesses and tender mercies. And he said, tell me what's in your heart. What's your daily bread? Tell me about it. And when you tell him and when you petition him, he'll go to work on your behalf. Well, that's, I just wanted to say, ask, because that's your daily bread. Now, tomorrow, we're going to talk about, uh, he, he talks about other things that might be preventing the kingdom of God from working, such as unforgiveness and, and strife. We're going to do that tomorrow. And then on Friday, I'm going to talk to you about where he continues, because when he finishes what we know is the Lord's Prayer, then he goes into asking bread for someone else. That's when we're going to talk about intercession. It's going to be powerful. I promise you, this can change your life. It truly can. It can change your life. So thank you for being with me today, and thank you for letting me have just a few moments to share my heart about the kindness of our Heavenly Father, and especially in relation to his love for you and when you pray to him, that how much that means to him, okay? And uh, please push like, push share if you would not mind. And because uh, there's somebody else that may they, may, they may need this today, okay? And you can also push subscribe. I would certainly appreciate that. I love you guys. And I want to say thank you for the gift of your friendship. Uh, I value that. Thank you for being my friend. And thank you for Thank you for allowing me to have a place in your life. I look forward to seeing you again. If I don't see you before, before uh, tomorrow, 
to, tomorrow evening. Uh, I want you to have a wonderful and blessed, blessed day in the name of the Lord. I love you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.